How's it going, guys? It is 2.37 a.m., 6th of May, Saturday here in Japan. We have a difficult question for pathology, step one, medium difficulty question, internal family medicine 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical, and MHL, man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 59-year-old man, one-month history, cough, two-week history, facial swelling, lost five pounds during this time, 10-month, 10 10-year history. Hypertension managed with lisinopril, smoked one pack of cigarettes daily, 30 years. Physical exam shows edema of the face and neck. JV pulsations are five centimeters above the sternal angle. This is elevated. Okay, so three centimeters is normal. Serum sodium, 126 mil equivalents per liter. It should be 135 to 145. Question wants to know which of the following is most likely to cause the patient's facial edema. So let's just hop to the answer choices. Choice A, angioedema, wrong fucking answer. So Obviously, ACE inhibitors can precipitate angioedema, particularly in patients who have history of hereditary angioedema. This patient's been on the ACE inhibitor for 10 years. I mean, maybe if they told you he was started on it three weeks ago, that could be more supportive. You should know hereditary angioedema due to the deficiency of C1 esterase inhibitor, and it can be treated with danazole, an androgen receptor partial agonist, which for whatever reason causes the liver to produce more C1 esterase inhibitor. In this case, Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, hypoalbuminemia, wrong fucking answer. So not something we could overtly eliminate yet. I'm saying it's wrong. When we're looking at the question, we say, well, why necessarily could this not be hypoalbuminemia? We have to think of etiologies for low serum protein, right? Decreased dietary intake could be loss of protein in the urine, such as due to nephrotic syndrome. It could be deficient hepatic production of albumin in liver disease. So it's not something we overtly eliminate just yet, okay? But we're going to continue looking at the other answer choices. Choice C, hyponatremia, wrong fucking answer. So similar to choice B, I mean, we don't overtly eliminate it yet. That's why I say this question is a little bit challenging, okay? Because we're looking at this and we say, well, why couldn't low serum sodium potentially cause edema, right? I mean, it's something to think about, but so far we're not able to necessarily eliminate choices B and C. So let's just keep looking at the other answers. Choice D, insufficient venous return, correct answer. Now this is going to be small cell bronchogenic carcinoma causing SIDH. That's why we have the low serum sodium here. The weight loss, cachexia, is supportive of our lung cancer in the context of smoking for 30 years. And this is going to be Sapir vena cava syndrome, SVC syndrome, which is why we have swelling of the face and neck. It's exceedingly high yield. Now, you can also get a positive Pemberton sign where it's exacerbated when the patient raises his arms above his head. Okay, but that's why we have JVD. This is the key detail here. I mean, we can't ignore the fact that there is insufficient venous return. The right heart cannot fill. A little bit challenging that he's edging on being elderly. So you say, well, couldn't he have heart disease? It's not something that is mentioned in this question necessarily. It's not a focus here. Smoking history with atherosclerotic possibility, fine. But we clearly have weight loss, smoking history, low serum sodium, small cell bronchogenic carcinoma, SVC syndrome. If we get the right side of the neck and face swelling only, that could be called brachiocephalic syndrome. There is one question on it on one of the two CK forms, but this is SVC syndrome, insufficient venous return. Okay, so it's a better answer than just blind hyponatremia or hypoalbuminemia. Okay, so nephrotic syndrome, wrong fucking answer. So you know nephrotic syndrome can't be correct because if E is correct, then B would also have to be correct, okay? We can play mind games. It doesn't have to be the other way around. You could say, well, B could be correct. B, B could be correct without E being correct. Point is, they're both fucking wrong, all right? You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.